humans have relentlessly pushed the boundaries of aviation to create incredible flying machines. These mighty aircraft possess awe-inspiring capabilities enabling them to carry heavy loads, travel vast distances, and perform remarkable tasks. From massive cargo haulers to supersonic jets, get ready to witness the sheer might and grandeur of the top 15 most powerful planes in the world. Number 15. The Boeing X-37 while visually similar to NASA's old space shuttle, the Boeing X-37's true purpose is unknown. What we do know is that it carried secret payloads on long-duration flights in Earth orbit, and that while it is launched from Earth like a spaceship, it re-enters the Earth as a space plane. According to the U.S. Air Force, the plane's purpose is to simply test out new sensors and next-generation satellite technologies. However, others claim that it's an experimental space weapon. For now, the truth remains a mystery. Number 14. Shenlong While NASA may be the world's premier space agency, China's recently launched a reusable robotic space plane that just may rival its American competition. While very little is known about the spacecraft, what we do know is that it's been launched several times since its initial unveiling in 2011, although only two flights have gone into orbit. Now, exactly what the Shenlong is to be used for is uncertain. On one hand, China stated that it will only be used for peaceful purposes surrounding the transport of people and cargo into space. However, outside observers have noted that the Shenlong is also primed to be used for military operations, so therefore its true uses are still to be determined. Number 13. The B-21 Raider the B-2 Spirit has been in service for the past 25-odd years, and this has given China and Russia enough time to build some competitors. As a result, the U.S. is looking towards new upgrades, and those have materialized as the B-21 Raider. Designed to fly multiple sorties each day, it's got a design that's somewhat similar to its older cousin, however, it stands apart. For example, its super slender air intakes and almost sanded smooth finish to reduce its radar signature, and its new weapons will presumably be far stronger. However, to date, many of the details, of course, are still under wraps. Number 12. Nuclear-Powered Planes Now, in the height of the Cold War, everything was going nuclear, and one crazy idea that was toyed around with was that of nuclear-powered planes. The hope was that they would be powered by heat from nuclear fission instead of burning jet fuel. However, neither the United States nor Russia figured out how to do it without harming the crew. Despite this, the United States came close by launching the NB-36H, which had a nuclear reactor on board. Yet the reactor was never actually connected to the engines, and once intercontinental ballistic missiles and nuclear-powered submarines became popular in the 1960s, the entire nuclear-powered plane program was cancelled. But in an alternate historical timeline, if nuclear planes were fully developed, they would have been insanely powerful. Number 11. The Boeing C-17 Globemaster III When the President of the United States goes to another country, he often comes with his own security. This usually includes the massive presidential limo known as the Beast, and as you might expect, transporting it requires a top-notch airplane. At the moment, that plane is the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III. First instated into the U.S. Air Force in 1995, it's able to travel at speeds of Mach 0.875 over a distance that spans from New York to Los Angeles while carrying 71,000 kilograms. This is possible thanks to its four Pratt & Whitney turbofan engines, which power the plane and allow it to carry practically anything brought aboard. And if that wasn't cool enough, the Globemaster III temporarily gains the Air Force One call sign while in flight, and even transports the President himself when necessary. As a result, from time to time, it is the single most important American vehicle in the air. Number 10. Xi'an H-20 While it won't be operational until about 2025, the Xi'an H-20 will be an absolute menace once it's completed. Developed by the Chinese Air Force, the plan is for it to have a range of at least 8,500 kilometers, so it can threaten the so-called Third Island Ring, which includes Australia and Hawaii. It will soon be able to do so with the help of four turbofan engines that are similar to the American Spirit B-2 bomber. While its advanced avionic features will ensure that it will be able to send out electronic signals capable of damaging and deceiving radar systems, its 9-ton payload will allow it to carry many kinds of weapons, with some of the most concerning being precision-guided bombs, air-to-surface missiles, and even nuclear weapons. 
If that wasn't crazy enough, then it'll even have a mobile data processing center. This is critical because it will allow coordinated military actions by sharing real-time information with other Chinese military units in the Air Force, Ground Force, or Navy. As such, the Xi'an H-20 will certainly be a difficult vehicle to handle. Number 9. The North American XB-70 Valkyrie The United States has developed many bombers over the years, but the one that holds the title of being both the fastest and the largest is the North American XB-70 Valkyrie. Developed throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s, the bomber was a marvel of military engineering. It's able to travel at speeds of up to Mach 3, and at an altitude of about 22,000 meters, it was extremely quick. This was despite its massive size, as it was 60 meters in length, 9.5 meters in height, and able to carry 235 tons worth of payload. Now, in theory, all this speed and carrying capacity would have been used in a potential attack on the USSR. The idea was that the Valkyrie could quickly enter the Soviet Union, drop payloads, and then quickly speed off. And since slow interceptor aircraft were all that the Soviets had in the late 1950s, such a design worked in theory. However, by the time the Valkyrie was first flown, Soviet aerial defenses had advanced to a degree where they could shoot down the XB-70 with relative ease. To make matters worse, in 1966, an accident that involved one occurred during a photo op, killing two pilots and further staining its reputation. As a result, only two XB-70 Valkyries were ever built, and the entire program was shut down in 1969. Yet, while the XB-70 Valkyrie certainly was a failure, it's still one of the most powerful American aircraft of all time, and it's for that reason that it earned a spot on this list. Number 8. Air Force One As the so-called leader of the free world, the President of the United States needs top-notch protection when in the air, and it's Air Force One that usually has the honor of serving him. Currently, Air Force One consists of two highly customized Boeing 747-200B series aircraft that are always at the President's disposal, and the features on them are pretty impressive. First and foremost, they are only one of the few aircraft out there that can be refueled in flight, meaning that, in effect, they have an unlimited range. They're also extremely secure, as they have onboard electronics that protect against electromagnetic pulses and coded communication equipment that allows the aircraft to function as a mobile command center in the event of an attack on the U.S. These security measures protect an aircraft that's not just very high-tech, but also exceptionally luxurious. The inside of each is composed of about 370 square meters of floor space, spread across three levels, with this including an extensive suite for the President that features a large office, bathroom, and conference room. In case of a medical emergency, a doctor is permanently on board and has such a great medical suite that they can even perform surgical operations if necessary. If the plane's visitors get hungry, they can rely on Air Force One's two food preparation galleys, all of which have the capacity to feed a hundred people and provide top-notch meals, such as fluffy blueberry pancakes in the morning and grilled beef tenderloin in the evening. So yeah, a ride aboard the Air Force One would be absolutely incredible. Moving on to number seven, the Shenyang FC-31. While America's F-35 may be the most powerful jet on the planet, the Shenyang FC-31 certainly gives it a run for its money. Easily one of the most powerful jets in the Asia-Pacific, it's got the ability to carry 12 medium-range air missiles, 8 ground-to-air missiles, and a combination of 8 deep penetration bombs and 30 small bombs, allowing them to wreak havoc no matter the situation. And despite having such heavy armaments on board, they're still able to travel at speeds of up to Mach 1.8 and are extremely stealthy, plus have many advanced sensors to detect incoming threats and aircraft. So as you might expect, such a design has attracted the ire of the United States, but not for the reasons you might expect. You see, it's believed that a cyber attack between the years 2010 and 2011 caused a data leak that allowed China to access the design for the American F-35. The Shenyang FC-31 was the result, and in its many ways was a copy. After all, the weight, wingspan, and height are very similar to that of the F-35, while other features such as the frames and weapons bays are also nearly identical. In some ways, the Chinese made plans even to have a leg up over the Americans, as the FC-31 is able to go to speeds of Mach 1.8 rather than the F-35's max speed of Mach 1.6. However, despite these similarities, the Chinese were unable to copy more difficult aspects, such as the flight distance and avionics equipment. Since these features are so important in modern warfare, for all intents and purposes, the FC-31 is simply a cheap copy of the genuine thing. 
Number 6. The Airbus A380-800 When we think of powerful aircraft, passenger planes don't usually come to mind. However, there are some out there that are absolutely massive, and the Airbus A380-800 is one of them. Produced from 2003 to 2021, they were trusted by major airlines and presidential jet builders alike. Used by companies such as Qantas, Emirates, and British Airways, it's also the official plane used by the Saudi Arabian royal family. Now, in terms of dimensions, the Airbus A380 has a length of about 73 meters, a wingspan of about 80 meters, and a capacity to seat around 525 passengers, although at a maximum it could seat a grand total of 853 passengers. As a result of this large size, it is the world's largest passenger airliner. And if that wasn't cool enough, it's also the only full-length double-decker jet airliner, making it a true marvel of aerospace engineering. Best of all, its innovative side stick control and brake to vacate system made it well-loved by pilots, while its reliability and comfort made it well-loved by passengers. However, while this should have made it a commercial success, the gargantuan $30 billion investment made by Airbus ended up going up in flames. This is because while these planes are great for long-haul flights, they're simply too costly and inefficient to run when not full or not running for long distances. As a result, once all was said and done, just 254 of them were made. With Emirates, which is one of the only airliners that has a series of luxury long-haul flights, being their biggest customer by far. And while Airbus continues to offer technical support, they were simply not popular enough to justify continued production, despite being incredible aircraft. Number 5. The Airlander 10 in today's day and age, almost everyone takes trains and planes for long-haul trips. However, in the future, the Airlander 10 may be your vehicle of choice. Known as a hybrid air vehicle, it's essentially a cross between a blimp and an airplane. On one hand, it's got between 60 to 80% of its weight supported by lighter-than-air helium. However, it uses a combination of aerostatic and aerodynamic lift and four diesel-engine-driven ducted propellers for liftoff. The end result is an aircraft that's capable of flying up to 100 passengers at a speed of about 130 kph with a range of 7,400 kilometers and the ability to stay up in the air for five days, giving it quite a bit of flexibility. Many have also noted that inside of the Airlander 10 is both roomier and more luxurious than that out of a standard plane. This is largely thanks to its dimensions. After all, the monstrosity comes in at 91 meters in length, 34 meters wide and 26 meters in height. However, the truly incredible thing about the Airlander is that it's extremely energy efficient. This is because on a trip from Seattle to Vancouver, it emits just 4.6 kilograms of CO2 per passenger. For reference, that's about 12 times less than planes, 5 times less than cars, and nearly 2 times less than trains. Now, if that wasn't cool enough, the team working on the Airlander is looking to instate further developments, and the hope is to deliver a hybrid electric edition by 2026 and a fully electric edition by 2030. And while some problems still have to be worked out, the hope is that these will be up and running by the mid-2020s. And on my end, I just hope that the Airlander 10 ends up being a commercial success. It'd be fun to ride one of those. Number 4. NGAD In recent years, China and Russia have been a real threat to American military hegemony. As a result, NGAD has been developed in order to ensure that the United States continues to be the world's top military power. You see, while the current U.S. arsenal is considered to be made up of fifth-generation fighters, the new push is to create a sixth-generation fighter to be used well into the 2050s and 2060s. The name of this initiative is NGAD, and it can be split into two parts. On one hand, the Navy's version of NGAD surrounds the replacement of the Super Hornet with a new fighter known as the FAXX. On the other hand, the Air Force's version of NGAD seeks to replace the F-22 Raptor with an updated replacement. With the FAXX, the Navy plans on creating a plane with no tail and improved armaments. It will likely be accompanied by anti-air, electronic warfare, and command and control drones, and will make use of manned-unmanned teaming, depending on the situation at hand. While it is not entirely clear what new technologies will be tested, cool advances such as smart skins that virtually adapt the plane's armor and performance based on the situation at hand have been discussed and are under development. However, for the sake of American national security, more details are unavailable at this time. The Air Force's version of NGAD will also be quite impressive. The idea is, is that it will develop several key technologies by improving propulsion, stealth, advanced weapons, physical design, and thermal management of the aircraft's signature. 
This will ensure lethality, while also making it easier for these planes to survive in difficult environments. At the moment, there are only two contractors, both working on prototypes simultaneously. Therefore, until one is chosen, it's difficult to know exactly what this plane's going to look like. Yet what we do know is that the plane's research and development budget is a staggering $9 billion until 2025. So therefore, both companies have a lot of money to work with to create the perfect plane. Number 3. The Caspian Sea Monster The Cold War brought the rivalry between the United States and Soviet Union to an almost nuclear conclusion, and part of that rivalry was the technological competition. Throughout the conflict, the two sides constantly tried to outdo one another by creating new vehicles, and few were quite like the Soviet Union's project. Nicknamed the Caspian Sea Monster by American intelligence, the plane was developed between 1964 and 1966, and when it was discovered by the United States in the Caspian Sea, they were stunned. While it would take them a while to figure out exactly what it was, the aircraft ended up being in a chronoplan. In essence, it was a cross between a boat and a plane, and it was designed to travel at high speeds just above the surface of the water, but below enemy radar. On one hand, this would make it immune to mines, torpedoes, and anti-submarine nets. However, far more importantly, it allowed the plane to make use of something known as ground effect. Ground effect happens when an aircraft that's within a certain distance of the ground experiences reduced drag because the airflow around the vehicle is interacting with the surface below. This effect creates a dynamic cushion of air that can increase lift by as much as 40% while allowing these aircraft to have much smaller wings. However, one caveat is that the aircraft must remain close to the surface. So as such, the Caspian Sea Monster was neither a true plane nor a true boat, but sort of a mix of the two. And given its eight enormous engines, length of 100 meters, and ability to fly at speeds of 430 kph, it was truly a scary sight for American military personnel. However, despite its impressive stats, it never served much of a purpose. While initially designed as a cross between a cargo carrier and a coastal defense vehicle, the Soviets never quite got the design right. Even after years of tests, the Caspian Sea Monster was prone to malfunctioning, and so when it crashed into the Caspian Sea due to a pilot error in 1980, the Soviets didn't bother recovering it. And while its sense has been retrieved, its future is unclear. However, at the moment there seems to be a good chance that it will be converted into a patriotic theme park. Number 2. The F-35 Lightning II While there are, of course, debates as to what jet is the best, as of now, the general consensus is that the F-35 Lightning II is the most powerful to ever be built. An integral part of America's stealth aircraft fleet, these jets are made by Lockheed Martin and serve the air forces of the United States, Canada, Australia, and many European countries. Able to reach speeds of up to Mach 1.6 and fly for distances up to 2,800 kilometers, the F-35 is one of the fastest jets out there. It's also exceptionally difficult to detect, as it's so stealthy that its radar cross-section is the approximate size of a golf ball. On board, the F-35's armaments are minimal but capable. Generally speaking, these planes have one 25mm gun and a combination of between 4 to 10 missiles. Now, from a numbers perspective, this may seem rather small. However, this amount of armament is perfect because the F-35 is designed to be a discreet fighter. For example, one of its more important roles in the U.S. Air Force is to conduct reconnaissance and then forward the information to U.S. Army and Navy vehicles, allowing them to effectively fight on the ground. F-35s can also engage in advanced electronic warfare, allowing them to disable enemy vehicles without firing a single shot. And as a final note, the F-35 is also great at taking on whatever weapons are necessary for a job. They've got very fine-tuned missiles that are often used for very specific things such as anti-tank, anti-air, or anti-ship missions, with most of these missions being long-range. So while there's a debate as to whether or not it's the world's greatest fighter, it can fit the role when necessary. Despite this great potential, though, F-35s are rarely seen in armed conflicts in today's day and age. After all, despite first being built in 2006, the first F-35s to see battle fought in 2018, when Israel used the jets to conduct airstrikes in Syria against suspected Iranian supporters of Hezbollah. The Israelis also confirmed that they used the jets to shoot down two Iranian drones, and it's widely believed they were also used to combat Islamist militants in the Egyptian Sinai and Hamas arms smugglers in Sudan. So while F-35s are mainly used for deterrence, Israel has shown that they can have a real impact in both offensive and defensive roles. Number 1. The Doomsday Plane 
Now, on paper, the Doomsday Plane is a pretty simple concept. It's a plane that, in the event of a nuclear war, natural disaster, coup, or other immense event, could be used as an aerial command post. And while many world leaders could benefit from having one, to our knowledge, just two countries have one in their possession. It should come as a little surprise that the US is one of those countries. Their doomsday plane is a specially made Boeing E-4, meant to house the US President, Secretary of Defense, and dozens of military analysts, strategists, and communication aides. It allows this group to continue their duties while a major incident happens below them. In other words, it's a war room. Now, to build this incredible aircraft, the cost was a staggering $223 million, so it should come as a little surprise that it's got a lot of crazy features. Perhaps the coolest is that it can fly for about 35 hours without refueling, and it was designed to remain airborne for a full week in the event of an emergency. It also has EMP protection and nuclear and thermal effect shielding to protect against outside threats, allowing it to remain safe even if the situation outside isn't. To top this off, the E-4 is outfitted with some absolutely awesome communications equipment, as it has a dome on the top of the jet which is packed with 67 satellite dishes and antennas, so that the US president can do everything from run the country to launch nuclear submarines while in the air. As a result, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch calling the Boeing E-4 an aerial version of the Pentagon. Russia also has a capable yet inferior doomsday aircraft in their arsenal. While we know less about it than its American counterpart, there are a few details that are public knowledge. First launched in the 1990s, the so-called Flying Kremlin is a Russian-made Aleutian IL-80 plane that's simply a modified version of the IL-86 passenger and cargo plane. In essence, it's an airborne command post and has special communications equipment placed within a dome on its fuselage that can prevent exposure to electromagnetic pulse attacks. Perhaps weirdest of all, though, the plane has no windows except for the cockpit, ensuring a maximum protection in the event of a nuclear blast. However, due to its age, Russia is looking to have it replaced, and this replacement is slated to come into being by 2024. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.